All right, welcome back. We are tinkering on better half today and we are actually we're in a garage now thankfully we're nice and warm and we don't have to worry about working out in the rain or the snow or now so that's good so i i think uh we're gonna just jump right in we're gonna go back to messing with the front suspension here um i have the leaf springs all set up the hangers in everything pretty happy there but one of the things i have not yet done is squeezing a track bar in here yet i'm quite sure that they are assuming that you're gonna use this in an F350. So you're just gonna use the OEM lower track bar mount and the OEM upper track bar mount. And we're not gonna do that. I don't have either, uh, especially cause we cut the lower one off the axle when we flip the U-bolts. So I've got some DOM and some rod ends and I think I'm just gonna crawl under here for a little while, tinker and see what I can come up with to try and find the longest bar that I can fit in the space while still fairly closely matching our drag link angle. So uh, anyways, I'm gonna uh, tinker for a little while and uh, we'll come back once I've got a game plan. All right, so I think I got a rough idea what I wanna do here. There is not a lot of room to work here. So uh, here's our, our mock-up of our track bar. And if we go back here right there behind the leaf spring even if we come over here you can see um i don't know if you can see that i'm, I'm actually resting on the diff it's actually already too high uh so i'm gonna have to lower it so there's no way to go past the diff and be any longer than that so i think what we're gonna do is there's a couple holes in the frame here that's where the pivot bracket for the passenger side beam used to go I think we're gonna try and design a bracket that bolts there and comes down because really our drag link is only like uh, 10, 12 degrees. It's not very steep. So we gotta come up with something fairly flat that fits basically in this space here and however long we can get it, that's just what we're gonna have to do. So uh, I think I know where that's gonna land. Um, so I'm gonna start designing something some kind of bracket <laughs> and we'll, we'll sort that one out and then we'll figure out from there bar length and and uh hanger location okay so this is first draft on lower track bar mount uh i was figuring we'll do it's a three quarter inch high so three quarter inch bolt right into a captured mount and then this can be cut whatever length it needs to be to set the track bar fore or aft. This way we can uh, adjust this to make sure it lines up correctly with our upper mount, uh, which obviously I haven't designed yet. So I, I want the Heim joint oriented like this because as the suspension travels, it'll move this way. I don't wanna have to design something that uses this um, because that complicates things greatly and it causes you to use smaller bolt. So I wanna use something in this direction, but I don't like the idea of it being single shear. So I have this piece here, which we're gonna weld on, which will make it double shear. So here's the plan. We're just gonna weld this piece of angle iron in place here, and then that gives us the double shear, which I think is gonna work a lot better. So I'm going to uh, roll the welder over, we're gonna get this welded up, and then I'll probably knock this off somewhere over here or so, just so we can get it under the truck and figure out more or less where the track bar is going to land and then we'll do our final cut whatever it's going to it's probably going to be like here it's going to be pretty short um, but we'll figure this out after we get our upper frame mount design that way we don't run into an issue where the track bar is running on compound angles so uh, i'm going to get this welded up and then we'll cut her off and uh we'll stuff her under there and see what we're going to do for an upper mount okay so this is our mock up here uh i really wanted this mount to be all the way over here over near the knuckle would have given us another you know two inches or so on the track bar length but unfortunately in order to match my drag length i got to be right around uh 10 degrees which is coincidentally where i'm at right now just sitting on the diff right over there so i think this is going to have to do because if this is over here i only end up with like a quarter inch of clearance here and i imagine that the track bar is probably just going to hit the leaf spring so that's no good so we're going to go with this. I'm going to get the mount maybe tacked in here. Uh, this is not the final there. There'll be other gussets and stuff on it. But uh, 
at least that'll get that end held in place and then we're gonna have to cut the bar down a little more but I think the next thing I'm gonna do before I even cut this at all I'm gonna get under here with some cardboard make some templates and start just building a bracket to bolt to the frame so uh, once I got a rough idea what that's gonna look like come back and, and show you what we got okay got a track bar made so I started working on our upper track bar mount so this is what I came up with so uh, it took me a little while to sort out the design, but I think this is going to work out pretty pretty well. This bolts to basically every rivet that Ford used to hold the passenger side uh, axle beam in place. So I don't have to drill a single hole in the frame. This thing will just slip up in there, bolt in, and done. So uh, I'm going to slap some paint on this thing, and uh, we'll get her installed. All right. Our upper track bar mount is done super happy with how this came out so that means the next thing to do is simply going to be to hook our track bar up and move our attention over here so i have my rough draft of my lower track bar mount done now and uh, it is not welded to the axle yet i haven't gotten in that far uh, what i think i want to do is it is going to go up tight against the spring perch here so i think i'm just going to rip this whole thing apart get the springs up away so I can get in here and actually get a good weld to the actual tube and then from there we're gonna add something I, I want to do some kind of gusset over here to the knuckle and then I'm gonna do something underneath I, I don't know if I'm gonna go here I don't know if I'm gonna go I, I don't know um, I'll figure that out later but uh, for now I'm gonna get some jacks out and uh, we're gonna get this thing up in the air so I can get it welded all right, so I ended up just pulling the Dana 60 out of the front entirely. It was just way easier to get in here to do some welding. So that said, uh, lower track bar mount is done. I got it gusseted on the bottom. I got one going off towards the knuckle. We got clearance for the U-bolt. So uh, nothing left to do now but slap this bad boy back in the truck. All right, track bar is in. Angle is basically spot on with the drag link, so that's cool. So pretty happy with how this came out. So uh, let's move on to the next part of this project. So with the track bar done, we are honestly almost done with the one ton swap here, but we still need to get some shocks in the front. So I got a set of Bilstein 5125s here, and I have the shock towers that came off of the big block Bronco. Uh, it's your typical, you know, uh, 80, 97 F350 shock tower that everybody uses. And these guys are just going to get stuffed up in here uh, somewhere. So I have the measurements on the shocks. They are 11 inch travel. They are advertised as 17 inches compressed, 28 extended. So I'm just going to take some measurements. We're going to shoot for four inches of up travel. That's going to be more than enough for what we're doing with this truck. It's not going to be some kind of crazy extreme rock crawler like the big block uh, Bronco is. So I'm going to take some measurements and try and get these shock towers on the frame and see if we can get these shocks in. Okay, I just whipped up a little uh, spacer here. Just some extra sleeves I had for some bushings around. This is the length I want the shock to be at ride height. So I can just slip this in here. And then I don't have to do any measuring at all. I can just set it in there, set the upper mount in place, and start drilling some holes. So hopefully this keeps me from making any mistakes. Okay, it would appear that the bolts interfere with one another. So I got to, I don't know why they why Sky they could have just moved it out another quarter inch, you know? Uh, but I gotta take this U-bolt out. And then we're gonna slip our 
little spacer in like so. And then I guess I'm gonna put this U-bolt back in so that we can get this plate laying down where it's supposed to be. Check this out. We've got a hole already in the frame. Where'd my tape measure go? Right here. Wait, let me do it this way. We've already got a hole in the frame right there. Uh, probably rivet from the original coil bucket. And if I put this tower here using that hole, we are actually gonna end up just a half inch barely a half inch higher than, than what i was shooting for in the first place so i think in the interest of not drilling a bunch of holes in the frame i'm going to open that up to half inch and i'm going to get the coil bucket or shock tower sorry i open that up to half inch i'm going to uh, temporarily bolt the shock tower in place and uh see how this looks because that that might be the ticket that'd be a lot easier why drill two holes in the frame when I can get away with only drilling one. Okay. Ah, jeez, it's not even... It's really close, actually. Look at that. Look the way our actual measurement is. 21 and a quarter? For a quarter inch, I'll make it work, man. That's the hole we're going with. All right, now, is the tower, where do we want to be? Probably want to be right there. There, I think that looks like the right angle. Okay. inch bolt tell you not to reuse fine thread u-bolts i mean it not on the one side galled not coming off so i don't have any i have some the right size but they're too long so i'm gonna have to run out to the store 
and uh, get a couple new U-bolts. So before I do that, since we're gonna run out, uh, I gotta run over to the driveline shop because we need to do our drive shafts. So I'm gonna get measurements for these right now. So uh, these are our original drive shafts out of this truck. I'm gonna get them completely rebuilt, rebalanced. Uh, I don't know if the lengths are going to change. We're going to figure that one out here shortly. I know we're going to drop the companion flange off this here because the Sterling that we are running has a yoke on the back end. So let me uh, crawl under here with a tape measure and a flashlight and uh, we'll check and see what's going to happen to this rear drive shaft. Okay, I got one bolt holding the drive shaft in up to the flange to the transfer case over here and that's that's good enough we get a measurement so we're going to drop this companion flange off we're going to go right to the yoke so when i first rolled the truck in the driveway before we even started ripping it apart i had measured uh right here center of cap to center of cap and this truck was 25 and a half now on my green bronco when we did the three quarter ton conversion which has the same thing as a sterling ten and quarter in the rear the drive shaft lost one inch it came out exactly one inch shorter uh this one's set up a little differently though that truck is running uh leafs from uh, b code super duty leafs in the rear whereas we have the shackle flip with the zero raid and all sorts of different stuff going on here so i figured i better get a stock measurement which like i said i did 25 and a half uh, as it would turn out this is exactly the same one inch shorter 24 and a half is going to be the length that looks like I'm going for. So I'm going to pull this thing back out of here and then we're going to roll up to the front and see what we actually need to do in the front because I have no idea what's going to happen with the length of that one. So let's find out. So got our front drive shift out. We're not going to try to mock this one up under the truck. Uh, I measured the from yoke to yoke and sitting here in the garage, we are at 41 inches. This drive shift sitting here as is is basically 41 as well so it's got about an inch or so in either direction uh, before it bottoms out and i mean realistically it'll probably go farther on extension without having any problems so i don't think we're gonna have to change the length on this one either which is it's actually really cool uh so that'll save us a couple bucks so i'm gonna load both of these drive shafts up and grab my ruined U-Bolt, and we're gonna run over to the driveline shop, see about getting these things rebuilt, see about getting a couple new U-Bolts, and uh, hopefully we can come back and finish getting the shocks in this thing today, get her back on the ground. Look at that. Shocks are installed. Ever closer to calling a one-ton swap complete. All right, so finishing off a rough day here, I did get another U-Bolt for the front end. I got both shocks installed, that's all done now. Um, we did have some, uh, some completely unrelated issues. I actually blew a fuel line in the Big Block Bronco right as I was getting ready to leave to go get parts to fix this. So that ended up turning into a whole cluster which ate up uh, a bunch of time during the day. But it's neither here nor there. Uh, that one's fixed. Shocks are in this so uh, we're that much closer to being done. Drive shafts are at the shop. Um, just They're going to short and rear. We're keeping the front one the stock length. They're going to completely rebuild both of them. Come back 100% ready to go. Um, it's holidays. Probably not going to get them for you know, two weeks or so. But I'm really not too worried about that because it's not like this thing is ready to be put on the road yet anyway. So um, the next thing to do would probably be brakes because there is nothing. Um, no brake lines. You know, we bought the truck. The master cylinder was dry. Wherever the leak in the system was, don't know, don't care. Uh, just going to start over. We're just going to refund the whole system from the master all the way to all four corners. So that's our next big project. Um, but I think before I do that, I want to get the bumper back on the truck because it's just been in my way. And I'm tired of tripping over it. So uh, I think that's just where I'm going to call it for the day. And when we come back, we're going to dig in, figure out what it's going to take to get that bumper on the front now that it's leaf sprung and uh maybe we'll dig in and do some uh front recovery points or something i don't know we'll we'll, we'll figure it out when we we'll get there all right later